Medyo malamig, ha? So, a praise God. I know tonight, Pastor Molly and Pastor John will be arriving from the Philippines. So, maybe you have seen some of the pictures. Uh, praise God that, you know, uh, the inauguration of Hope for the World Committee was successful. And praise God because I know God is expanding His kingdom all over the world. And we are part of that. Amen. Praise God. So this morning we are so privileged to have a uh, he's not a guest because you know he belongs to our family and let's prepare our hearts because whoever God uses here, I know God has something for us. Amen? Amen. So let's have the spirit of expectancy because if we have that kind of heart, if we have that kind of attitude, I know the Lord won't fail us. Amen. So, praise God, without much ado, I would like to welcome Coach Ken. So, shall we give a mighty clap of praise? Thank you, Pastor Alex. Yeah, I know why everyone's thinking this. Why him? There's like four pastors in this church, and why this guy? But, uh, we'll just bear with me, and uh, hopefully we'll get through this easily. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, God, for your presence. Lord, we thank you, God, that you have set the tone throughout this morning that you have given us the heart of worship. Lord, we just thank you, God, for everyone that is here. We ask, oh, Father God, that you open our hearts, you clear our mind for your message, Lord. Whatever you have in store for us today, Lord, may we use it, may it Equip us for our daily life, and may we practice it. Lord, we also want to pray for safety for Pastor Noli and for Pastor June as they fly back tonight. We pray, oh, Father God, that you protect them, the flight attendants, everyone that's on the plane, <coughs> the pilots. Lord, we just want to pray uh, for also the plane, from the smallest part down to the biggest part. Pray, oh, Father God, that will be a safe departure and a safe arrival back here in the States. And we just want to welcome them with open arms next week. And also, I personally want to pray for their safety so that when they come back here, I don't have to be here again. Let's <laughs> be praying in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean it. I mean, I mean that. I mean that. I mean that. Okay, so, you ever get up in the morning and like, turn to the side, to your left or to your right, whatever side of the bed you, you sleep on. And you just stand up, walk to the bathroom, do your business, brush your teeth, without even thinking about it. Do you, do you ever see yourself to actually, oh, you know what? I'm gonna turn to the left this time, and I'm gonna swing my feet out this way, I'm gonna push off with this leg, and then I'm gonna take a step with my left foot instead of the right foot. And then when I get to the bathroom, I'm going to turn the doorknob with my left instead of my right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brush my teeth with my left hand instead of my right hand. And when I spit, I'm going to spit and then water and then spit and then water. Not three times. No, because it's a habit. Everything that we do, that we've done, is through experience and through practice. Through the things that we've done for throughout the whole year for how old everyone is, it doesn't matter. But um, it's just because it's so routine. Our behaviors, our patterns are already set. And because of that, we don't think about it. Everything's automatic. Everything is unconsciously an effort. Without even thinking about it, without even planning about it, without even writing it down, we just do it. So, what I want to cover today is how to break bad habits. We all have habits, as I've mentioned before, but there are bad habits that are obvious. There are uh, bad habits that are 
things that we don't even notice that we do. There are bad habits that have become so accustomed to that we see it as it's okay. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. We'll start at verse 17 all the way up to 32. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in their futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of the hearts. Can you go back and go back uh, to verse 18? Okay. I want everybody to repeat ignorance. <coughs> ignorance. One more time. Ignorance. Ignorance. Internet security alert. Oh, your computer oh, might be infected oh. by harmful viruses. All right, I'll take the intermission. Shut down or reset your computer. Just skip ad. Yeah. Just skip ad. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, wait five seconds before you skip ad. Um, so, what was that? Oh, yeah. Ignorance. Hardening of their hearts. Repeat that word. Hardening of their hearts. Hardening of their hearts. Say someone next to you, are you ignorant? Are you, are you ignorant? Don't answer that, okay? Don't answer that. Nobody answer that. Don't, don't answer that. Don't answer that. All right, let's continue on to verse 19. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over sensuality so as to indulge. Repeat, indulge. indulge. Say indulge. indulge. In every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learn. That, however, is not the way of life you learn. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life, your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by his deceitful desires, Say deceitful desires. Deceitful remember desires. those words, okay? I want you guys to remember those words, especially this word. Deceitful desires. Deceitful desires. One more time, one more time. Deceitful, deceitful desires. desires. Okay, say it, say it like you mean it. Deceitful, deceitful desires. desires. Everybody has deceitful desires. Stop lying. Deceitful desires. Say it. Deceitful desires. Deceitful desires. Let's move on. And to be made new in the attitude of your minds. And to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, Slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Okay, so what is the definition of habit? You go next slide. Okay, Merriam Webster defines it as a behavior pattern. Acquired by frequent repetition, physiologic exposure that shows itself in regularity or increased facility of performance. Acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. Oxford defines it as a settled, settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. I like that one. One that is hard to give up. A habit is one that is hard to give up. 
now a bad habit is just basically everything that's defined there and just put it negatively, right? But when it comes to bad habits, we, we don't, it, this doesn't happen overnight, you know. Habits <coughs> takes effort. Habits takes time, takes energy, you know. And the implications of the bad habits that we encounter are some not so heavy, some pretty heavy because of the habits that we're used to, it actually not only hurts us, but it hurts the people around us. Let me just cover a couple of the examples the Bible identify as bad habits, besides the one mentioned previously. Next slide. So these are some examples the Bible identifies as bad habits. So the first one, of course, lying. So lying, <coughs> that's a topic that uh, it's easy to talk about, but it's hard to actually practice. Because sometimes when we lie, we think it's okay because we're doing it to prevent other people's feelings to get hurt. You know? Do I look fat? Nah. <laughs> How do I get these pants? Ah, oh, you look good. Should I get another slice of dessert? Yes. Sure. If you want. Yeah. Are you paying? Okay. Sure. But. The thing about lying is, it starts that way. That's the root of the bad habits that we have. It's just that, as soon as we start doing this white lie, it gradually moves on to bigger lies. Where sometimes our lie, we're so deep into our lie, we start believing our own lie. And that's dangerous, you know? <clears throat> no, I don't talk about that. But uh, like the previous, well, there's a person we know, you know, that they're so captivated and they're so, so stuck with their lie that they start believing in it. And because of what happened with that lie, it affected the whole family. And because of that lie, that family you split up. And that lie was just, it started out small. Every lie starts out small. Every type of <coughs> uh, false truth is justified as well. Because we may tell a story or a statement, give 99% of it true, 1% of it is false. It's still a lie, right? So, when we tackle this part, this example of a bad habit, but when you do do it, just make sure that when we catch ourselves lying, back up from it. Tell yourself, oh man, I'm sorry, dude, that was a lie. Play it off as a joke. But don't, don't use the word joke, it's too much. Then everyone will never take you seriously. Okay? Improper use of anger. <coughs> Now, these are, um, now this one, improper use of anger, is something that uh, it even hits me. Because God said in a, all of the Ten Commandments, do not kill. Jesus said in the New Testament that if you even have anger towards your brother, that's already considered as murder. Right? But improper use of anger is, could be outward or inward. <clears throat> it hurts the person that you're ang angry towards, or it hurts you because you're keeping it all in, you're bottling it all in, which down the road will just implode. <clears throat> then you start having a mental breakdown. When I say improper use of anger, what I mean is uncontrolled anger. Either road rage, one of the best examples of uncontrolled anger is road rage, or 
impatience mm -hmm. when you're like stuck in a line and like, Costco. That's why I don't go to Costco anymore. <laughs> I'm like, there's like one cart in front of you, they're only buying one item, but then all of a sudden they, they can't find their wallet or they can't find their check to pay for it. Like, those types of anger will just build up and you either start showing it outwardly, start telling that person, or inwardly, where it starts affecting the people around you because then, then all of a sudden it starts reflecting off and bouncing off the anger towards them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Complaining, overeating. This one, that was a, that was a trip that I found that one. Overeating. Did we go to that one? No. No? <laughs> all right, let's skip that one. <laughs> the last, all right. Let's not go down. No, let's go down. Proverbs 23, verse 2, if you can find that one. It also, it also <coughs> ties in with uh, self-gratification and indulgence. <coughs> if you could find that one, you won't find it. You won't find it? <laughs> You're not going to find it? Okay, you can find it. And put a knife to your throat if you are given to blood. Put a knife to your throat if you are given to blood. Now, the obvious ones that we actually hit upon when we think of bad habits are bad to our body is smoking, drinking, drugs. No one ever discusses overeating, gluttony. Because did you know that it's actually uh, diagnosed that obesity is not a disease? When I learned that, I was like, can't believe that that's actually a disease. All you have to do is put the fork down. <laughs> and that's your, that's your cure. You just put the fork down. And I was like, I can't believe that's a disease. The, the, the hardest thing for me to realize that overeating was a bad habit was that now there are kids who are diagnosed with obesity. There are kids who's like 10, 8, Nine, and diagnosed with obesity. And that hurts me, because like, when we were learning this stuff in school, <clears throat> and we actually got to a filter, we saw kids that we had to diagnose, and they were like three years old, four years old. It was a pediatric setting, and we were doing exercises for them. And I was just, my heart sunk, because I was here trying to help this three-year-old in this physio ball, you know, the physio ball, right? So we're trying to work on core engagement, strengthening the core. So the, the, the little kid was sitting on the wall and I'm like trying to move him. Or her. Can't say hip hop. But, um, <laughs> but um, I can't move him. So I try to shake him, do a little bit of movement so that they, they're able to engage their core. And this kid was crying because he was having a hard her, him, her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't say that. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the child was crying because the child was crying because the child had a hard time engaging the core and like losing balance. And the child was so frustrated that they couldn't do that. They started crying to their parents because it was hard. I mean, I'm over here using a physio ball as a chair, as an office chair when I'm doing my studies. And they're struggling, and that, that hurt my heart, man. I mean, to know that a kid through overeating is struggling in their quality of life, it's painful. It's hard to know that. What more for adults, you know? There are so many things that we have to avoid when it comes to overeating and indulging, is that the food that we eat reflect on the body, on our organs, you know? So like with the history of uh, Tita Maggie, you know, she's healthy now, praise God. And, uh, she's gonna continue to be healthy, she's gonna continue to be healthy. But those types of 
um, experiences where the Panthers just shut down. That all contributes to the type of food we put in our body. Because it overworks the system, overworks the organs excessively, that it doesn't take a break, it doesn't go back to its normal state. So, avoid it. Eat in moderation. <coughs> So let's go back to the previous slide. What are some examples the Bible identifies bad habits? So indulging, self-gratification, malicious talk, gossip, wasting money. Imagine that, wasting money. Criticizing, you wanna hit it? You wanna talk about that? Yeah, all right, let's move on. Criticizing, judging others, overwork, laziness. Overwork. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> All right. So, next slide, please. You want to hit that one? These are live questions for you, which especially for the home group leaders. I just wanted to give this to you guys so that you have a good, some idea of what to ask. Because I know how hard it is when you're in a home group, you have nothing to ask. I've been there. <coughs> I facilitated before, and you're just like you're looking at your phone, scrolling through the last Sunday's preaching. And you're like, "Oh, what, what do I ask? What do I do? How do I start this?" So I came up with this. In what ways do your habits rob you of peace? Which habit would you like to be free from this year, 2018? Which habit? Which bad habit would you like to be free from this year? What are three benefits would you experience if you were set free from those habits? From that habit, one habit. You pick it. Okay, so next slide. Oh, wait, 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 sorry, not yet. Still writing now. <clears throat> so I also want you to think of this not only just because you're a whole group leader, but as everyone here, I want you to actually look at this question, have an answer in your head, either type it on your phone or write it on your Write it on a piece of paper and see how it will help you this year. Okay, so I actually just want you to just look at this and meditate upon it, answer it, engage in it. Okay, so next slide. So before we get to that, <coughs> just leave it there. Bad habits will ultimately lead to addiction. Now, we don't notice these things becoming as an addiction or becoming addictive because we think of it as it's not such a bad thing. It's not something that we can say that we need an intervention for or we need to go to rehab for. So that's why people think that it's okay and that's why they don't use the word addiction with bad habits, but in all honesty, it does. Because it ultimately does lead to addiction because what addiction is, is that you do something so much that it becomes a normal daily activity. That's what addiction basically stands for. And that's what habits are. It's a normal daily activity that we don't even think about. Just like how when we get up and on the, whatever side of the bed, just when you brush your teeth, just like when you're walking, just like when you're standing, everything is a normal daily activity that we don't even consciously think about. That's what makes it an addiction. So my first point for why is insensitivity to God. So in Ephesians 4, verse 19, having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. In NLT, <clears throat> they have no sense of shame. They live for lust 
a lustful pleasure and eagerly practice it. Every kind of impurity. Now, insensity breeds callousness. Callousness breeds hardening of the heart. Hardening of the heart breeds sin. Sin breeds death. So it all starts in that portion right there. It's that not only are you insensitive to God and His words, God already gave us how to live in this world. God already gave us how to live our life properly through His Word, through the Bible. But even if we do our daily reading, even if we do our meditation and our prayer, and these habits of ours, we don't face it. We don't confront it. We don't overcome it. it. Will lead to us with two words that always, always leads to insensitivity. And those two words are, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I lied. It's okay. It's not gonna affect anybody. Oh, uh, forgot to read the Bible. It's okay, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. Oh, I forgot to pray. Ah, it's okay, I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I forgot to go to Hope Group. That's ah, okay, it's only one day. I'll just come back next week. And then ultimately, you'll be soon. Ah, I missed church. It's okay, I'll do it next week. And then next week, and then next week. A year later, you haven't been in church. That's what happens when we become insensitive. Insensitivity turns our heart into callous. Insensitivity turns our heart to complacency. And complacency, as everyone knows, kills. And if complacency kills in the professional world, <coughs> what more can complacency kill in the spiritual world? Right? So, <clears throat> insensitivity to God. Insensitivity not only to God, but to the people around us. Insensitivity to the situation around us. Insensitivity to the moment. What I mean by that is, you're having a conversation with a friend or a brother or sister. You tell the joke, you kind of hurt their feelings. You know, the word tactless. You hurt their feelings. You don't say sorry. You do it again. You do it again. You do it again. You do it again. And it was that, uh, that word that uh, Rebecca always uses. It's a uh, roast. You get roasted. You get roasted. You get roasted. From that roast, you actually are not only inflicting damage to the person that you're hurting, but you're also inflicting damage to Jesus because your life is supposed to be the reflection of what Jesus' character, Jesus' personality, and Jesus' attitude is supposed to be. So how can we say it's okay to be insensitive to others when those others are the ones that we need to be sensitive to because they're the ones that we need to reach out to. Those are the ones that we need to show God's love. And those are the ones that we need to, to reach out and to give them the gospel. It's hard, it's hard. That's just first point, I have like 12 points. No, I'm joking, I have three. All right, next time. I'm playing, I'm playing. This one, pleasure, that's what I've said before. With every example that I, I will I post it up there, all the examples the ident the Bible identifies by habits, they all lead to pleasure. They all lead to pleasure. In Second Timothy chapter three, verse four, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now he was talking about um no, it's not good. Okay, so what what is pleasure? Pleasure is uh, it's pretty easy to describe, right? Makes us feel good. You know, makes us feel good. Gives us a little 